All right. We are back, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, with another episode. Of, I hate that horn, man. Stop doing it. Uh, with another episode of Daddy Issues. We are still dads. Yes. Still indeed. got issues, whether good or bad. Indeed. Mm-hmm. Indeed. We got a guest in the house, as you can see. To hear more. I am a guest. Yeah, fellow father. F- father of a daughter extraordinaire. I am a father. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how old is your daughter for those that may have forgotten she is 14 14 14. taller than me well well, Well, yeah yeah. that that's that's a lot of people but but you know it's not even five minutes in we're we're not even (laughs) five minutes into the podcast and the disrespect starts you know it's funny we don't even be doing that normally (laughs) it's your energy that you bring you bring all I said uh, was she was 14. <laughs> <laughs> Cause to hear said it like it was it was a big accomplishment yeah. to pass him in height, you know. Not that to hear is short, but how tall yeah. are you, Keon? 5'11. Alright. I'm just yeah, no. Maya, Maya is uh 5'10. <laughs> she is not 5'10. Maya's tiny. You just how tall said you, Maya. Five three. Oh, she actually gave us the height. How old are you? I'm not telling. I gotta put my oh. thing on mute. <laughs> Sick of it, man. Uh, to here. Yes, sir. How's your daughter been handling the quarantine, the school being shut down, all of that? Oh, uh, hey kid, how you been handling everything? She did. So I guess, okay, you know, I mean, we had to talk about, um, you know, previous before all the social injustice was on the uprise, we had to talk about quarantine and, you know, it was the normal thing. She missed her friends and stuff like that. And, you know, I can I can get out and go to Target and a couple other places. Like yesterday, I did the laugh factory. I get to get out. But for the most part, she's she's here. So been trying to make sure we like engage her in things and around the house and make sure she's reading things and you know this is one of the books I'm trying to encourage her to read right here 101 things everyone should know about uh African American history 101 and, look like a thousand no, one a thousand thousand one oh, okay. did I say a hundred did I say a yeah, hundred yeah. a thousand one thousand one that zero kind of just floats in and out wherever it yeah, wants yeah, to yeah you know it happens um and and it's giving her chores man like she she <laughs> She has actually got the best grade she's ever had. Well, since she's since fourth grade, she's had the best grade since fourth grade. And uh, oh, we're wow. honestly thinking about uh, there are a couple of virtual high schools. So we're thinking about taking her out of her uh, school and actually putting her in a virtual high school uh, because she seems to work better when she doesn't have the distractions of the classroom and our friends around. So we... Uh, her and uh, Farron did this uh, this group call with a family that has been in the virtual high school for a little bit and just trying to convince her to it, um, you know, or not convince her, but like show her the the benefits of it. And she sees it. She likes getting good grades. She's very proud of herself and we're very proud of her, too. So, you know, it's this is really a big shift, man. So because I never even knew those things existed. But Farron's like, yeah, Farron's like, yeah, there's a couple of them out here. So, and that's one of the reasons that we've stayed in the area that we have been in, because I've been kind of wanting to move uh, just to maybe find something a little more uh, spacious, but also still reasonable. Uh, but one of the reasons we stuck in this area because was because of her schooling. But if she does the virtual high school, then we can move to wherever we want, we find somewhere and we like. So, you know, it could be a win-win for us on that that front. Oh, that's dope. That's this, dope that she yeah. was able to to thrive and excel better on the on the homeschooling. She's an A and B student. A and B student right I now. I heard I heard that pretty that goes hand in hand for the most part with homeschooling is you, your grades get better. Yeah, but well, there are no distractions. I, She's I don't a think that went for Sincere. Sincere, I don't know if he falls into that. I think he did better at the school mm. than he did at the house. Well, I think for her, I think she doesn't feel. As well, he was anxious. doing virtual though, not homeschooling though. No, that's what we're talking about, like virtual, right? Yeah, so she's doing homeschooling yeah. now because of because of the pandemic, and she can't go to school. Hey, hey, get out of here! Go, get out of here! 
Get back in that room. Go! Was that her? <laughs> nah. Is that the dog? <laughs> That's the <a> dog. <laughs> so you kept, you kept the dog to here? <laughs> I know that face. I was, when we was on the road, he was about to get rid of that dog. He was like, where was we going? We were we, going to Spain? Yeah, we were either going to Spain and or coming to here, up. man, we was talking to Tahir while we went through, we went through customs for like hours. And we were just like, Tahir, man, you can't get rid of the dog. Nah, I've had it. The dog is out of here. But but Speaking of pets. But the dog, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the dog. That's good. I never, I forgot to check in on the outcome of that. You a good dude, to hear. Whatever, man. He doesn't seem... Because remember, we was dog. like, you can't punish the dog. Yes, yes, I can. <laughs> you can't punish the dog. The dog was innocent. I'm, I'm not a fan. I mean, I told, it ain't my, about that. My views haven't changed. I'm not a fan of anything or anyone that just takes a place and doesn't add anything. Like, the kid eventually will uh, get a job and move out, Right. Parents, you know, they stay with you for a little bit, but they add something. They might cook something or clean the house or something like that. Pets, bro, you just, you're always cleaning up after pets. I I get that. Dogs, you always got to clean up their poop. Like, they never going to grow up to a point where they go outside with you and they they bag their own poop or put it in their mouth and take it to the truck. They don't ever do that. They are just, they are just nuisance and they are just require so much time. At least with cats, they poop on their own. Well, most of them do. Your cats pee all over the place, Tony. I don't know what's wrong with your well, cats. Well, no, it's just dapper, actually, and I think he might be done with that. Your but cats, the poop, yeah, they go themselves. Yeah, your cats be all in the sink, licking your toothbrush. Oh. They, they, they do a lot, man. It's a lot. And I just, I don't see the need... I get it. Personally, for pets. Now, I know some people have pets and their emotional support pets, you know, people who, you know, have maybe experienced something or going through some trauma or, you know, going through a healing process. But for me, I don't need no pet. You preach to the choir, man, because Tony knows how I feel about pets. I yes. Just, they, I, everything you just said, what do they do? Nothing. Other than cost you money and take That's your it. time. What do they do? Man, listen, let me tell you, let me tell you something. If if this is what will this is what will be the switch. If it was required to get pet insurance, like when Obama was in the office, you had to get some type of health insurance. If it was required to get health insurance for pets and it had to come out of your dollar, you would see a lot of people abandon their pet. It'd be dogs and cats on the side of the so. 210. I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. Maybe I black people. So. Maybe black people. Oh, for sure. That's what I was talking but. about. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't talk, would talk about white people. White people, they will, they will, tooth and nail, tooth and nail, they will fight for that. I just the pets, and that, that, it, I, I get really like upset when people be like kids and pet. You can't compare the damn two. You can't, mm-hmm. like you said, there's a return on investment with a, with a human being. There is mm-hmm. zero return on investment. No, with, not, with a pet. Always. not always. Not always. Some kids, is, they'll mooch out their parents until the parents die. That's I mean, bad that, parenting. But even, even oh, with yeah. that. I mean, yeah, but you know I mean? it happens. Even with that, though, sometimes, like, even in the teenage years, they will wash dishes, sweep floors, something. Help, you, something. help you bring groceries out of the car. They'll do something. Oh, pets, yeah. Pets just These be cats bad. never help me with the groceries, man. I'll be struggling at this door, and they'll be looking at me. I'll be like, you mother. They be, sit, they be sitting up like that and just looking at you oh. like, oh. All in the window, like, yeah, you struggling, Tom? No help. <laughs> Zero help. I got to chime in here. For no. most of history, cats kept grain supplies clear of rodents. And then they That's kept facts. rodents away during the plague. And people blamed it on cats. That's but the facts. cats were, I have my cat on my lap right here. His name's Blackjack. He's awesome. Uh, <laughs> and they kept people from getting the plague because it was spread by fleas. Mm, and even facts. now, I don't have any mice. People around Ooh. me, they have mice. I see rats. We don't have anything. Also, in New York, they always have cats in the bodega because the cats keep the rats away. So when you go in them stores in the East Coast, there'd be cats in there every time. And they just yeah. be chilling, like, on the product. And they'd be like, yeah, we don't, we don't get mice. And I'd be like, so I they do serve. I mean, I they do, like, dogs, too. They serve purposes to sell. I, I, don't, I don't believe that thing about New York because I've been to New York. New York doesn't have mice. They only have rats. And I've seen rats. <laughs> and they're hold, bigger than the cats. Yeah, they're bigger than the cats. <laughs> I, saw, I saw them jumping this cat in the subway. They had knives out. And it was like, what you going to do? Now you're feline. 
<laughs> them rats, them rats are huge, and they be out in broad day. Man, they don't care. They mm. like, oh, what what time is it? Noon? Shit, that's crazy. <laughs> Excuse the rat- me. I'll be like, <laughs> the rats be riding pigeons. They don't man. even take the train no more. They 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 just they just stepped it up, man. In front of the hotel, thugged out. Where you going, Pickles? Yeah. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> These rats ain't gonna be talking to me like this. <laughs> Not a fan it's of the crazy. pants, though, man. Not a pan, not a fan of it. But I'm glad you changed. You had to change your heart, because that dog is gonna pay the price. And I was like, all right, hey man, listen. I, I told him I said I ain't gonna bring it up no more. I haven't mentioned it since then. I ain't mentioned nothing about getting rid of him or nothing like that. I just don't. I just don't engage with him at all. You know what it is? It's more so his 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 nails, right? Um, and at first they were afraid to clip the dog's nails because, you know, dogs, their, their nerves are attached to the nail. So, you know, when he walked around the house, it sounded like he had 48 pairs of tap shoes on. It was like, clack, 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 clack. And he'll come in right in a buildup of a, of a plot of a movie. And you'd be like, get out, bruh. Get out, bruh. <laughs> you know why I killed all those people? <laughs> click, clack, 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 clack. And then when he runs out, he's like, get out. He's like, clack, 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 clack. like, what? And my issue with mine, one of them, the shedding is insane. The shed, I'm vacuuming three times a day easily because I just get sick of seeing the damn hair everywhere. And then even stuff, he's by like, I've watched, like, you know, if the light shines right in your room, Mm -hmm. I watch him plop down and it's just hair. Yep. Just Mm -hmm. hair. And every time I just be like, I just, you've lived a good life, man. Just tap out. Yeah, I, I feel the same way, man. I hate seeing the hair everywhere. Uh, we sweep pretty pretty frequently here, and the hair just gets everywhere. Like we don't, the, he's usually in the kids' room, right? So uh, because of that, like he be on her bed, she puts them all on her chairs and plays. But she she does what you're supposed to do with a dog. But I, that because of that, I will never wash her clothes with mine. Like we don't wash the towels with her clothes or anything because her clothes are just saturated <laughs> with dog the DNA. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would go to the laundromat and leave her clothes intentionally. I'm like, hey, man, you ain't sort them. I don't know what to tell you. She's like, you could have did. No, nah, man. That you, your clothes, or your dog are your responsibility. Once you took that dog on, you on your own, kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, too. Own. Like, when, I, when I've been to your house, you, you be having that dog out of the picture, man. That dog be, I'm like, don't you got a dog? I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know. I don't let him engage with people. If she ain't here to watch him, he ain't coming out, man. I'm not here for it. <laughs> you feed him? No, I don't feed or water him. I don't walk him. I don't do anything. Like, one time, uh, uh, Farron and the kid had went out of town. And um, I was like, you better find somewhere to take that dog. And they dropped it off at a friend's house, and the dog watched. I mean, the, the friends watched the dog while they were out of town. Because they knew I wouldn't do it. They would come I'm back. i not that bad, but The dog I would be on the IV and all of that. I'm not. I, I have no... No relationship with that dog. You understand me? <laughs> and the craziest thing is he loves to come to me. He will come in the, in the living room and sit by my feet. And I'm like, fuck you doing, bro? Like, I don't, you know I don't rock with you like that. I am just not a fan at all. Not a fan. He, he be giving you the, the <laughs> puss and boot eyes? Yeah, he and, and that's the thing. He's a really <laughs> cute dog. I just be like, nah. Nah. So when I'm he comes sit it. by you, do you tell him now or you just sit there and don't say nothing? He Do you usually let him does, stay there? Nah, he usually does it when she's about to take him out for a walk. And so uh, I, I'm like, man, go on, go on, bro. Go on, go on. And then he'll go over to her finally. Because he don't he don't listen to her when it's time to go for a walk. Like, she'll be like, come on, people. She'll go in the living room. She'll sit down because we put the little shoes on him now before he goes out. So he ain't bringing everything they step on inside. Um, and he would just come and sit by me first. Or he sit by fair and fair and rub him or something. I'm like, man, go on over there, bro. Go on. Go on. <laughs> Oh, right. Zero tender moments, man. None, man. He, he ain't my, that's like, that ain't my people, man. That's her people, bro. Like, you know, you don't get along with the in laws. Like, nah, bro. That ain't my mama, bro. That's, Fair enough. I don't rock with him at all, bro. My kids don't really mess with the dogs like that either. Then why y'all have them? Get rid of the dogs. They were hers right? when we met. So it was just like I got I got two step kids I don't care about like that you feel me like I I just and the kids like they 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 cool but because 
They be doing their own thing, so the dogs, they be like, get out of here! Because the dogs be trying to get in the game. They be like, move! Like, she just got a haircut. The girl just got a haircut yesterday. So now they a little bit more like, oh, what up? Because she's fresh, she's clean, yeah. and everything. They're like, oh, her haircut. But the boy, he still, he walk over, everybody be like, man, move, dog. <laughs> And he's always That's servicing it. himself. Like, he go go somewhere with that. I don't want to <laughs> see your lipstick out all the time. And he, it, you, know what's, you know what makes it upset? It's not that he services himself. He makes noise. So it sounds disgusting. Mm. Like, you hear him enjoying himself. Like he'd be like, hmm, hmm, hmm. And I'd be like, come on, man. Like, even, if, even as a, a grown adult human, if we go masturbate, we go do it in private and we're quiet about it. He'd yeah. just be like, hmm, hmm. I don't want to hear all that. I, I like I, I like when the family goes. I put it on the surround sound. I put it. <laughs> <laughs> I cast it straight to the TV. You hear it like, oh man, it sound like it's going down in there. It's a whole. <laughs> he laughs. It's a whole production. But it's boys, a party they, in there. <laughs> the boys be like, ah, yeah, yeah. They be doing their own thing though. That's what they at in life right now. Mm-hmm. They doing their own thing. They playing. They don't even respond to regular names anymore. And I'd be like, boys, it's time to go brush your teeth. They'd be like, Dad, tell Spider-Man it's time to brush his teeth. I'd be like, all right, Spider-Man, go brush his teeth. He'd be like, okay. Psst, 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 psst. Like, he won't do nothing. They don't do nothing regular. And he's been correcting me as of late by calling Spider-Man. He'd be like, oh, no, Dad, it's black Spider-Man. I'd be like, oh, okay, my bad. Go ahead, Miles, do your thing. Miles right, Morales. Go ahead. Dad, tell Miles Thor. Morales. Tell Thor he got to go to the bathroom. I'd be like, go to the bathroom, Thor. He'd be like, all right. Like, I'd be like, they won't function unless... Unless <laughs> they are their character. Once they're in character, they are full character. Even when they That's talk right. to each other, they won't answer each other with their real names. You have to call them by the character name. Or they not All playing. Right. That's commitment. Like, That's they commit. They commit full on. Commitment to the bit, man. Live and die in the bit. I respect it. I respect it. I'm like, mm-hmm. All right. You should just pick Goodness. one of them, pick one of them up and throw them. I'm like, well, you can handle this by the man. Just throw them for that. <laughs> From that second floor straight to the couch, like save yourself, Spider Man. <laughs> you didn't web sling. You could have web sling on the on the ceiling, fam. Uh, man, these kids now, man, they actually have dope comic book movies to watch, man. That was yeah, just yeah. a fantasy for me growing up. Like, man, but these kids actually got it. That's that's super dope. It is. Yeah. It's a dope time to live, man. A dope time to be alive. Mm-hmm. But you know, techno- technology is only going to get better, man. Like you know, it's right. going to be like a full, a full experience movie screen at some point. Like when you are uh, watching a movie, you're going to be able to like maybe feel some mist. They're going to have the misters in there. If it's like a water scene on the ocean or something like that, maybe like some scents coming through the movie theater, so you can like get the smell of the salt water and stuff like that. It's going to eventually get to that. And I'm looking forward to that. That might be the thing that revolve, I mean, revive the uh, the movie theaters. It's like a full experience, cinematic uh, movie going experience. Like, but those they, tickets gonna be thirty five dollars a piece. They Absolutely. got a theater where they're trying to do that. It's in uh, the valley somewhere. We went we went to see Black Panther for like the second or third time there, and the seats was moving, and they had the little. Mm-hmm. The little stuff going in there. I was like, all right. It was cool, but I was like, I don't really need. I'm just cool with good sound and visuals. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I don't need the psst and then the. Yeah, I don't but, need to be uh, in it. But Tony that's what Universal Studios is for. Tony, Tony was born <clears throat> during the Civil Rights Movement. So, everything that 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 is extra, Tony is not a fan of. He nah, just is a, that's not true. It, it is, man. You're bored with Tony. Out here. You're I'm not. out here with the times. Nah, man, you out here in the community. That's it. Just out here in the community, out. putting papers on people's front yards. That's what you're doing, man. Collecting milk bottles. That's you, you. I'll be, I'll be fussing, but I'll be engaged in everything. <laughs> I got on this dang diddly fancy kitty TikTok. I'm on there. You still rocking with TikTok, huh? Nah, I tried. I got off. You saw. So you like, sided with the ops, man. You know. You know for a fact that they were targeting black creators and 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 deleting. I, that I don't stuff. know that for a fact because I never looked into it. But Instagram ain't no better. Facebook it is better. ain't no better. And well, everybody you, stay with, on them. With you, yes, because they. I feel like. I felt like it was somebody that was following you that was intentionally reporting your stuff. I don't yeah. think that was necessarily the app. But with TikTok. Like to deliberately, like they came out and it's like, hey, diversity and all of that. Then they came out with another statement was like, 
Uh, we apologize to, you know, uh, creators of color and all of this type of stuff. Because um, at first they were like, no, we're not doing that. We're so not. What, what were they doing? I, what I, were they I, doing? Not, I have nothing on it. They were like deliberately and intentionally oh. removing black creators content. And this isn't like, like, you know, people like doing nothing ridiculous, like nasty or vulgar or anything like that. One one person was telling you how to use your voice when it comes to interacting with the cop or anything like that. That's it. Like that face wasn't even in it. Remove their stuff. Pat had the um the the one video was like, I want some back in the next. I want some bacon in it. And it was like, like how your kids ask for breakfast and stuff like that. And that's what the video was. And they removed his video. They removed a number of past videos. One time they removed one of my videos or they just didn't let the, yeah, they removed it. And I don't know if it was because I used a song uh, outside of TikTok, but the song that I use is on TikTok. I just wanted to start it at a certain place instead of what they had it start at. But where it went to, all of that was on TikTok. And so it was just like, why why are y'all doing this? Like they've removed mm. like six of my videos, and I just was like, I'm done with them, bro. So I ain't rock with TikTok at all. I think I still think they hella racist. Um, uh, I still think that they are deliberately targeting people of color's content to remove it. And I'm I'm standing on that, bro. I got a whole movement. Uh yeah. hashtag fuck TikTok. And hashtag I'm like, fuck TikTok. So did they, I, I, they you said they came out and said that? They apologized? Yeah, yeah. I I I, 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 I could find it in my phone, but I got it on Who Airplane owns mode. TikTok? It's actually owned by a Chinese company. There's a national security review under oh, TikTok because they were acquired by a Chinese company and they don't know yet if it's Chinese psyops. So maybe it is. And if you have it, they probably have spyware on your phone if it is. So we'll wait for that investigation to finish. Mm-hmm. And you know, how TikTok, man. you know how they were treating black people over in China. You know how they was treating them. They was telling them they couldn't go into the McDonald's and all of right. that type of stuff. Like, they treat black people bad over in China. So I just want to put that on your plate, let it simmer for a second. And I want you <laughs> to know that, that you part of the problem by still do using TikTok. <laughs> That's funny. You out here fighting I, uh, for equality, but you siding with the ops, Tony Baker. Actually, no, though, because I've been, I've been making statements on the TikTok about stuff that's going on. Mm-hmm. Why well, use the app? But I will tell you this: they pulled some of my stuff. They pulled my video. Uh, first of all, they pulled the video I did about the dead whale in the Amazon. Snatched that off my thing. Yeah, it's like. And then, then they pulled. Uh, they pulled the one where I said "nigger" with the hard er. Mm-hmm. But I figured, you know, I said the hard er when I was talking about Activision. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, doing their thing, and then they pulled another one. Um, I forget which one. They pulled that. And I was like, all right. That's the thing. They'll pull your stuff. Even when you're talking about, like, making a point of of, 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 of the, or highlighting the racism and injustice. But then they'll let so many other racist videos fly. That was another point. Like, them attacking black creators and people of color creators' uh, content from from TikTok and deleting it, removing it and all of that, but then letting so much other stuff stay on TikTok. Oh, like, Instagram do that all the time. Facebook do too, man. They I'm do saying, that all the time, man. It'd be, it'd be the same video I seen somebody else post. They snatch it off mine mm-hmm. and throw me in the gulag. I'll yeah. be like, yeah, this this video? Yep, yeah, all the time. I, I'll be wondering if they target people because I've seen that happen where like, I'll share something I'm like, but I got it from somewhere else, and that one's still up. Why is mine down? Yep. Hmm. All the time. Happens to be 87,000 times. Yeah. I'll be lying. Tony, I want you to fix those pictures. I want you to either make them full size so they fit inside the frame, or I want you to get different frames, because I don't like seeing that white border on four of those pictures. You understand me? Yeah, you got to talk to Sabrina about that. So you know, I'm, uh, I'm talking to you because you live with Sabrina, so whoever did it, I need you to fix it. Okay? Nah, That's man. all I'm saying. They're going to they gonna stay just like this. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. How about that? Because well, cause all they do is, all that company does is they take the, the pictures that you have okay. online yeah. and throw them into the frame. So, Gotcha. Yeah. Fix it. Uh, what's Fix going it. on in the community, Maya? Well, we have a lot of questions from our audience today. Oh, uh, what they talking about? There's, they're good questions. DM asks, 
If y'all were elected president, what would you do in your first 100 days? They don't really yeah. want to know my answer. You could tell by my Tic Tac rant that I'm hella militant, so they don't really want to know my Tic-tac. answer. Tic Tac. Tic Tac. Huh? Tic Tac. <laughs> uh, Tic Tac. You, yeah. you got beef with the, uh, the, the breath fresher, huh? You in bed with the ops, Tony. You in bed. <laughs> you get up every morning and make your half of the bed and fluff the pillows, okay? Mm-hmm. You laying down with the enemy. Let me see. First I'd have to, to it, my, my first hundred days would probably depend on what information I'm privy to once I get in. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't know everything. So if they drop all these bombshells on me, I'm, I might be like, oh, we got to We got to change all of this. True. You know what I, I mean? Would, I would, like, I would, they showed me who JFK, who killed, I might release it. I might <laughs> do that in my first hundred. I don't know. I got to know <laughs> what classified documents I'm first being thing, seen up in here. First thing I would I would focus on is uh obviously police reform and also uh reestablishing the the protocol for teacher payout. Uh, because uh, yeah. teachers get the short end of the shaft so much, man. Like I, I had no idea how much they own money they spend. The yeah, like, they get the small penis. Yeah, he meant the, the short, short end, end of the, of the he shaft. Meant, he meant the shaft or the short end of the stick, but he mixed them together. He to hear mm-hmm. it. It is what it is. But you know, I had to. You know, <laughs> that. I did. They get the short end of the shaft. They get the small penis for the short the pure, end of the shaft. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realize how much money they they spent out of their own pockets. I, really? I never knew that until my a lot of my friends became teachers. I was like, my goodness. Not only that, man. It's like like a lot of public schools, they. Their funding is determined on the property value of the neighborhood, right? So if they are in urban cities, uh, neighborhoods that aren't valued as much as the counterparts in the county or uh, valleys, depending on where you are, they're going to get less funding from the government, which means that, that those teachers do have to spend more out of their pockets and they don't get the newest textbooks and uh, they don't have all the, the freshest resources and they don't have the best lunch program because it's based around that. It's just like, how does property value determine how much education someone should receive? Like, right. that's ridiculous. And then also, like, you know, upon, you know, the research with the cops, like the whole defund the police, it's not just about like, you know, the funds that they use for this equipment and these weapons that they're using to harm the community. It's also for their pension. They they get their pension and they might make 100 percent of what they were making on their salary. So if they were making one hundred thousand dollars when they retire, they're still making like one hundred thousand dollars. And that's ridiculous because teachers don't do that. And yeah. teachers are literally the people who are raising and educating the youth to become the future leaders, the future politicians, the future police officers, the future teachers. And they get like, they just get shitted on constantly, yeah. man. So I would, I would definitely look into education reform as well. It's a good platform. Mm. Tony would look to create new zoo programs so he can get Movie free videos. Theaters. For his voiceover. Can you imagine Tony Baker? Tony Baker as the president doing voiceovers. (laughs) I would definitely still be doing them. (laughs) That'd be my whole, you would never see me in person on TV. It'd just be my voice on stuff. (laughs) Um, I don't know what I would do. I would definitely dip into the secrets of the past. Because mm-hmm. I'm fascinated with what the government be hiding. I'm like, I know you motherfuckers created AIDS. Mm-hmm. Where's the documents, huh? Huh? You got the UFOs? What was, what's, what's Area 51? Let's go to Area 51. Hmm? What's going on over there? I knew you was hiding stuff. I knew this person killed MLK. I knew what was going on. That would be me. I wouldn't even... Mm-hmm. By the time I come up for air, I'll be three years in. I'll be like, oh, shit. <laughs> uh, new stuff. I didn't do nothing new yet. Stuff. Damn it. Uh, 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 yeah. I was in the past the whole time. But let me tell you this, American people. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know. Definitely education thing, especially because I was going to be a teacher. And so uh, I definitely would look into education reform, uh, try to make it to where schools are more, you know, uh, equally yoked. Uh, just because you ain't got the money in the neighborhood, it's just ridiculous that you can't get the same education. Mm-hmm. I feel you on that. Uh, health, healthcare would be big for me. 
health care and, and police police reform. I would, I would, I would strive for that, universal health care. You know what I mean? Problems that affect uh, people in general, but, you know, black people. I would I, That would be my 100 days. What What's all the stuff that's police reform and, and uh, you know, uh, education and health care and just and, and not just, you know, across the board, but just like in the communities that we need them to be in. Like every, mm-hmm. every time something gets passed, it feels like it don't be trickling down. To mm-hmm. people who really need it, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, 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 like I feel like this whole administration right here, like to have been uh, causing over HUD. It's like, bro, bro, been rich all his life. Why, why would you have him over like urban housing development? Yeah. Like how, how, how? He can't relate. He don't no. understand that. He ain't never been in the trenches like that. It's like you got to put the right people in the right place to do the right job. Like even with back to the whole teaching thing, um, oh man, it was another. Oh, the curriculum is so outdated. Like I've said this multiple times, there's no reason why high school students shouldn't be made aware and taking courses on finance in high school. Like, because as soon as you get to college, they are going to bombard you with credit mm-hmm. card options. They're going to bombard you with loans. If your parents make just right under this amount, now you have to take out a loan. You don't qualify for financial aid and all of that type of stuff. And even if you're out on your own, you still got to get your parents' signature and they got to say, I, I, I verify my child or me will like um, make sure that this loan gets paid back. It's too much red tape. You need to like have a direct line and these people need to be educated on what they're signing up for. Like if you're a kid, like I didn't realize that I was signing up for this gap card and the interest rate was like 7.8, which is ridiculous yeah. for an mm-hmm. in-store car. And then if you miss a payment or you over 30 oh. days late on a payment, it goes up to 18.9%. Woo. It's like, mm-hmm. What? Are you serious? Mm-hmm. But you don't know that. You don't know that until you're already balls deep in this fire, getting your scrotum singed, right? It's too <laughs> late then. It's too late then. And that just creates a cycle, a repetitive cycle of, of always being in debt. You come out of college in debt. You got to pay mm-hmm. loans back. You got to pay credit cards back. You got to pay a car note off. You might uh, have an a, a ongoing balance balance at your dorm. Like it's, it's so much. And it's because you're not equipped financially um, uh, educationally in the finances. So I, I definitely think curriculum should definitely be hit up earlier. And so, and mm-hmm. I'll piggyback off you and say history should be read. Like these, I saw that video the other day where the, the, the white kid was like, how am I just now learning about all of this? I mm-hmm. knew none of this because they, been, I was in school for 12 years. They I knew graze none of over this. it. Graze oh, over yeah. it real quick. It may okay, guys. All right. Anyway. And I have a dream. Move on next to the chapter. Next. Yeah. Yep, that's it. They, it, yeah, it, it America likes to hide their, their dirty history. And once we start getting too involved with our heroes, then they want to dirty that up. Like as soon as everybody was like, yo, like we really, I think it was like a couple years ago, we were really on like Martin Luther King and like it just, you know, his kids were in the news a lot. And then they was like, oh, FBI, this is a perfect time to release the tapes and the speculation that he was having marital problems and he was committing oh, adultery. Care. No, no, it's nobody like, care. Bro, why? We, yeah. don't, we but don't they care. But they did that because they, you know, they also released that. Yeah, we we killed him. Uh, that was us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we don't like, care but, that he but, was but, cheating. But, but he had side hopes. So, yeah. you know. So so what? You know. He could have a, he could have another chick in every state. I don't give a damn. That ain't got care. nothing to do with what he was fighting for. Nothing. Yeah, so... He could have been know. smashing at the I Have a Dream speech. <laughs> I don't give a damn. Like, man, he taking her down. That's crazy, Coretta. But anyway, <laughs> yes, the table of brotherhood. <laughs> they was trying to dig up anything. He was cheating. <laughs> Nothing? Nobody? Nobody cares about that. And then that. even with that, they shit, they were saying that they was trying to get women to, to make calls and do like they they it was so corrupt, I don't even care. I I, I could care less. <laughs> even if he was just a straight up dog. And every ain't, ain't nobody perfect, man. Somebody gonna be raggedy at some point in time. Absolutely. But the stuff he was fighting for was for the bigger picture. I just want them so. to, to 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 continue 
to highlight all of this, man. Like, let's look at the dirty truth and let people judge a person's character by their actions and what they did on this earth. Because everybody loves to talk about, oh, Lincoln freed the slaves. Lincoln gave the South an ultimatum. It was like, hey, y'all can either fall in line I'm going to free the slaves. And, and nobody looks at it from that standpoint. It wasn't like mm. that was his agenda. Yeah. His agenda was to unite the states again. But the South was like, man, whatever, bro. He was like, all right, well, I, I could pull the trigger and slavery be, <laughs> it be illegal. Then what you going to do? You got to do your own work. They was like, whoa, 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 whoa. We mm. have to work? He's like, oh, you can fall in line. It's like, bro, you ain't going to tell us what to do. All right, you know what? Free the slaves. <laughs> free, free them niggas over there, bro. They was like, <laughs> President Lincoln. Your slaves too? He's like, we keep them for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody still got to serve the White House lemonade. Come on now. We can't be in the kitchen ourselves. Let's not go crazy. <laughs> but like they won't, they won't, they won't give you that truth. And it's crazy that we have to seek that out ourselves. Like African American studies, bro, I didn't know about that until college. It's yeah, not offered. Either. It's not offered yeah, yeah. In, in our curriculum. And it's crazy that black people are so much a part of American history. We're not offered our history. Yeah. Right. Because again, they it's don't, just, they it's don't just want to talk about that. They don't it's just a do chapter that. in the semester. That's Bro, it. Bro, it's not even a chapter. They give us the cliff notes of a chapter. Mm-hmm. A chapter. Yeah. Be, we would welcome a full chapter where they talked about more than just the top five of black history. I'm talking about a full chapter where we got like 30, 40 names, right? We don't even get that. We get the cliff notes of that. And they now give us a to, high five. You get, to, you get you get Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Frederick Douglass. They'll, Malcolm, they'll, 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 Malcolm gets a page because I remember yeah. that Malcolm gets a page. They'd be like, and then there was Muslim nation Islam, yeah. and then you go and then you get George Washington Carver. Well, I did. Yeah, I did a fifth grade report on him. Mm-hmm. You get him because peanuts. Let People me ask love. you this: To here, since you grew up in the Midwest like I did, mm-hmm. did y'all have to do Black History papers? Absolutely. When he was in school. Yeah, we had Absolutely. Too. I never no, did. I'm not, I'm not talking about one paper. I'm talking about we had to do 10 papers on a different oh, uh, no. prominent African African American to pass the to pass the grade. I didn't no. I didn't have to do that, but my mom would never let me pick top five. Like I had to do like Marcus Garvey. I had to do W. Phyllis e. Wheatley. With Charles Phyllis Wheatley. Drew. I had to do uh <laughs> Elijah McCoy, uh the first black man or the first person who happened to be a black man to create the lubrication system for trains and things like that. Like I had to do the people who were, you know, 60 to 100 pages back after the top five. And I loved it. I'm very thankful that my mom pushed me to that because that's what made me really like dive into African-American history and culture and mm-hmm. see how great we were. And, and then you start hearing the stories of like, you know, the uh, the the person that created the super soaker and how, you know, he had to fight for his money. And also the young lady that created a, a, a thought of the idea that was eventually turned into the matrix and how they tried to play her. Just like, yeah, I remember bro, that. it's like, just give us our due. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. we've never asked for more than what we were just due. Equality. That's the stuff that. That's just what's really- annoying about all of this. It's like no, but no black person is like, we want to take over. It was just yeah, like, hey, no. it would be cool if we were all same across the board and yeah, we got right. our credit. It's not like, I don't know why that's insane. We're not asking for dominance. We're not asking you to wash our feet. That's just over the top. That's over the top. Uh, just uh, Can you just treat me like a human? That would, that would be great. Did y'all see that picture of those people they were washing? Yeah, I was just like, I don't I know. I would be this. so uncomfortable. Like, what do I do? Wait, what? What? They was washing the protesters' feet. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, I was just like, we don't need. I don't. We, we don't need, need that. that. We don't need Democrats we don't running need around. Kente cloth. Kente we don't cloth need. Onions. Like this. That's not necessary. It, you know, you know what we need for you to keep your word after you've been elected. That's what we need. Exactly. We need you to to, to stick to the plan. <laughs> and then the Kente cloth overshadowed what they were there for. They were there for a good thing. Yes. And then you put on this Kente cloth, you become a running joke. When what you presented, the bill you presented was legit. That was enough. It's that's one thing I would do as president. I would try to get rid of the Republican Democrat parties. I would try one. to do away with that. I'm sick of it. So They'll send just, you on a car ride in Dallas if you try to do some of that stuff. That's that's what I would try with the, with the, with the top down. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
They would they would not have it, but I'd be like, I'm not feeling the two party system. Man, listen, if I was president, I would have to have a team of doubles. I'm talking no less than 13. You would not know when the real me was in public because they are going to shoot at your boy. That much I can tell you. I'm coming in hot. I'm, <laughs> you know, they that's just slow down for Atlanta. Uh, yeah. That's why I would never, I was like, they would kill me. Oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not doing this. Mm-hmm. They would find the real to hear because he'd be fumbling in his speeches. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> as soon as he fumbled, <laughs> blast nah, him. The, the, the speeches like, are going to be pre-recorded. I'm just going <laughs> to mouth it. <laughs> uh, What's like, the next question, man? That? Well, first of all, I have to defend my school. Uh, we were taught African-American history. In, we were also taught the evils of slavery in depth to the point that it traumatized us at like a very young age. <laughs> like we were taught about how a guy was punished by having his penis cut off. And we were like mm-hmm. 11 years old. And Thank it was you. like the whole class was like, oh, my God, I can't believe they did that. They showed us the pictures yes. of the beatings. They were like, mm-hmm. this is Need what that. the South does. No, it was, also, it, it was also North South propaganda to be like, we're good. We're New England. We don't do this. Uh, this is what the South did. Which trash. they still taught us. They still taught us whether or not it was propaganda or not, but it was like very in depth that these are psychopaths that did this to people. And the black and the white kids were like, how could they do that to people? And they're like, well, they're terrible people. They're terrible people. <laughs> like, I just want to say that I know a lot of parents probably felt some type of way about that, but then they will sit up and let their kids watch an action movie where somebody goes in and murders like 60 people with four guns and all of that type of stuff, and they have no problem with that. But finding out the truth, the truth right. is what people have a problem with. When they find out that, that stuff that their ancestors did, they're like, well, I am not them. Well, you're, yeah. you're still kind of repeating the cycle, like just in a systematic way, but... It's, it's still going on. So I, I just think that's so ridiculous. But excuse me. Let, let me get off this high horse. It's so box. <laughs> We've got a good question from Liz H. She didn't know that Tahir would be on. So it's even better that Tahir's here. Says, hey, Tony and Keon. I'm a 19-year-old young woman who regularly listens to your show and enjoys doing so. Thank you, Liz. You two don't have a daughter, but I wanted to know that if you had one, what is the one thing you would want to teach her? Self-love. I just out the gate. I feel like just from what I see and what I witnessed, a lot of the things that young ladies do is lack of self-love. Let somebody manipulate them into some stuff because they don't have the self-worth. You know what I'm saying? So off top, that would be what I would just be telling her. She's amazing. She's dope. She's smart. Just every day building her up so much and no one could break her. That's dope. I like that. I like mm-hmm. that. That's a that's a major key. Mm-hmm. And also, like you know, uh, the thing the thing with daughters and fathers, man, you, you see it all the time. The 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 women that have a strong bond with their father, and it's like a healthy relationship. Mm-hmm. They just move differently through throughout their lives. I noticed. Yeah. Like whatever you see, yeah, me and my dad did this. We did that, and the, you know this, that, and the third. He always did this for me. It. it it shows majorly in how women move through their lives. And I was like, that's a major key right there. Yeah, even a lot of games they're willing to play. Yeah, they, they, they don't, they don't put different. up with nothing. They don't put mm. up with nothing from dudes when they get their strong bond with their father. They'd be like, you know what? He was out of here. I, I ain't like how he was. He, nah, I ain't like mm. how he said this one word one night. I was yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I try to teach her uh, how to move as, move, move as if no one owes her anything um, because my daughter is very beautiful. She's tall um, and she, you know, she has a great look. She has the locks, half her head shaved. But I always remind her, like, I, I, I love you. I think you're dope. I think you're super smart. But a lot of the world is still going to see you as a black female. And because of that, you're going to have to move differently. You got to you got to strategize your moves. You have to do things intentionally. And then I also teach her about like the fucked up stuff that I did when I was a kid. And I teach her how to spot fucked up behavior in guys. You know what I'm saying? Like I want I, I always joke and say I speak nigga in five different dialects. 
You know what I mean? <laughs> and I, I, I say that because you know I've, I've hung with people on the south, the east, the west, and the mid and the north and the midwest. And I try to teach her like through example, like I always open Ferris door anytime we go out. It don't matter if we literally just going around the corner. She always sees me open her mom door. And when Farron first when they first moved out here. I had to teach that to Farron. She would literally race me to the door to open up her own car there. Like, nah, I got it. I got it. I'm like, I know you got it. I'm not saying you don't got it. I'm saying, let me provide and do this to you as, for the for you as a man. Like, it's not a lot of things that I can't do for I can do for you because you are so independent. And I love that about you. But let me do some of these small things. So it just takes a load off of your plate. And so anytime we're going somewhere, I open up her door and my daughter sees that. And you know, I pay for stuff. I order for us. I pull out her seat. I take her coat. You know, the shivers things that are kind of fading from our generation. I'm trying to keep alive and I'm hoping that my daughter sees that and she finds a guy that would do that or she finds somebody that is willing to learn how to do that for her. Because she I will. Gotta, yeah. She will. Because that stuff sticks. Mm-hmm. Because my mom, mm-hmm. my mom is so like the reason why we're like that super shiver. I never saw my mom pump her own gas. Like, I never mm-hmm. saw that. She either had my, my dad either did it or if we was in the car, she was like, get out and do it. Mm-hmm. My mom, I watched my mom literally. Uh, she's the type of person that if she's walking up to a door, she'll stop at the door until somebody comes. You know how some girl, I get it myself. She'll be like, no, she'll wait. Let mm-hmm. somebody open it for her. So like this is stuff we saw. So we sprinting, opening doors. We because she that's what she demanded. Yeah. Because that's Absolutely. how she was raised. So yeah, that's all we knew. So like you said with Farron, when me and Cotty first started dating and I'm opening doors and stuff, she's like, what are you doing? Like it made her, it, it was like weird for her because no, yep. she didn't, she wasn't raised like that or whatever. And now it's like customary. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now my boys do it. They, my, Keelan will run and open, I got to open the door for mommy. And I'd be like, yeah, you do. That's great. That's great. Kids be watching, man. And that's what a lot of people don't realize is that you don't have to do a lot of sit down. Let me break it down to you. You yeah. just have to show by example, just repeated example and patterns that you keep doing. And your kids just be watching it be like, dad be opening the door for mom. Dad be doing this, dad be doing that. So I just made sure they always saw it. And it was never like, hey, when you're getting in the car, you know, yeah. it was just, they just mm-hmm. see it. And yeah, like, the, right. the deep the deep nineties sitcom sit downs don't yeah. really be necessary like that. You just watch what your folks do and you kind of just copy that. Right. Yeah. Like my dad had a few of the sit down moments, uh, but it was usually after I did something. Mm-hmm. And then it just this is why or why not. You know, right. you can't do that. And even if he didn't necessarily disagree with what I did or whatever, he would tell me you know, from my mom's perspective of what I did and like certain things, you know, because he, he would always, you know, he would always make it clear that, you know, he is who he is. Mm-hmm. So, but he's trying to make us better men than he was. Because we're right. looking at him, he's giving us these lessons man. and we like, bro, but you not, he, I know I didn't, but I, mm-hmm. right. this is how you should be, you know, in, in, in different scenarios. So I understood it. I was like, all right. Yeah. I would also, am I? Yeah, I would also like to add that it's very important for girls to not need to be liked by anybody, and this happens in a professional setting as well. They're less likely to ask for the raise or assert themselves or the promotion because they feel that they're not going to be well liked. Mm -hmm. And this social settings and professional settings. So don't be afraid to say, "I think I deserve this raise," and as if you back it up with reasons and say it in a very calm voice or I think I deserve this promotion because, and you give them reasons, don't worry if they don't like you anymore. Because if Mm. you bring value to the company or to the organization, they will understand that. And if they're they're a good boss or business owner, they'll want to keep you around. And if they have uh, some sort of misogynistic tendencies, like, oh, I don't like that she spoke up for herself, then that's probably Mm. not a place you want to work at anyway. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It also goes in professional, uh, in personal settings, is that some guys, you'll be nice to them and they'll think you want to sleep with them. So they'll take it to the next set, next setting. So, you know, maybe don't be too familiar, but just be firm in who you are and firm in what you want. And if they're worthy people, worthy gentlemen, they'll respect that. Or worthy humans, I didn't say gentlemen, they'll respect that. And you don't always have to be so pleasant. You don't always have to be so sweet and nice. And you can be. 
but don't let them mistake you being sweet and nice because that's your personality for you being a pushover. Yeah, yeah. right. That's good, too. Because, yeah, because don't nobody ever to tell no dude, you should smile more. Like, you don't have to smile. Right. Yeah. Like, right. No, why, that, no one ever, I've never been told that in my entire life. You should smile right. more. That's super right. true. But it's rare, though. It's rare. Yeah. They be, they be saying that to me when we do the uh, the silent listening party. Smile, <laughs> Tony. I'm like, man, I'm listening to the trap. <laughs> Don't nobody be listening to music like this the whole time. Tony be like, <laughs> I'll be taking it in, man. We yeah. give we giving reviews on each track, man. I'm listening. People people don't respect the focus face. Right. <laughs> They don't focus, respect, especially especially when we're doing stuff like this. Because I get called out all the time, like Keon's not interested. But no, I am li- I'm focused on what's happening. So I'm just mm-hmm. once I pick a spot that I'm looking at, this is me, me listen. Like I'm I'm I'm, I'm taking listening. it in, like I'm taking mm-hmm. it in. <laughs> they want us to take it in like this. Yeah, or like looking at the screen. That's not no one thinks like that. You've never seen <laughs> Nobody on the street doing that. That's freaky anyway. Look how Tony's looking at us. It's weird. That is weird. I would not want him to look at me like this during an entire podcast. That's weird. And then the shift positions and still keep the face. We're like, yeah, bro, calm down. Calm down. What's the next question, Mike? <laughs> it's from Dad Salute Truth, which is one word. Writes, my third child is on the way 10 years after my last child. Ooh, Ooh. the reset button. My wife Arm. says I should get a vasectomy because it's less complicated than her getting her tubes tied. What do you guys think? Yes. Snip it. Yeah. Yeah. Snip, Snip it. 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 Snip easy. it. Yeah. Snip it, man. I'm looking into it. Yeah, I think well, if you, me too. If you too. Now that yeah. things are opening up, I can finally do mine. Yeah, I'm yeah, not looking yeah. into it. I'm into I might, it. I want to do it. I might be snippy long stocking here pretty yes, soon myself. Man. So snip it. We should go at the same time, guys. Hold hands. Let's yeah. let's do it, man. <laughs> let's yeah. do it. It's it's out. It's outpatient procedure, man. It's a uh, same day type thing, and then it's like uh, I think I think it's a couple weeks of healing, but mainly you just got to get out. Like you got to ejaculate. I think. I think it's they, something like 25 to 60, 60 times before. Yeah, they said it depends yeah. on how often you get it in or whatever, yeah. like the time. But also everybody's body's different because I've had friends uh, that said, you know, they healed in three weeks. I had some say they healed in a week. Somebody commented one time and said he was smashing the same day. Oh, he's right. I was like, you a savage. He is. Man. <laughs> Massy, he was classy, classy. <laughs> <laughs> so it, yeah, it depends. Yeah, but yeah, no one, no one that I know has said it was like hard though. They all said it was a chill procedure. Yeah, yeah I had one so horror story. I had one horror story. My best friend had just Uh-oh. got his done a couple of while ago, while uh, a couple of weeks ago. I'm sorry, and um, I, I guess like they they. They basically burn off the tips or something like that, and then they put this like metal clamp on it to like you know, keep. Wait, I guess some. I don't I heard know that. Yes. Wait, they so put metal in there. They they put like some some clamp on there, right? And so basically, it it came off in the scrotum, like it came off, and he didn't realize this at the time, but it it swole up. It caused his his scrotum to swole up, uh, to swell up, and eventually it cut. Pierced through his 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 scrotum, and he basically just pulled it out and then went back to the hospital because he was having so much pain. He went to the doctor a couple times and they was like, like, oh, it's probably just a healing process. You know, you've been masturbating too hard, whatever, whatever. And yeah, that was the that was the problem right there. Is that this this metal piece was just bouncing around his scrotum all over. I ain't heard nothing like that. What doc? Where did That's he go? Terrible. He was in uh, Minneapolis. Oh, he was in Minnesota. Was he in Minneapolis? Huh? Mm-hmm. The spot, the origin story. <laughs> <laughs> Minneapolis that's, strikes again. That's, that's, I that's the ain't only... never heard about Minneapolis so much in my man. life until now. And then you say it was in Minneapolis. I'm like, man, man this is just the center of the universe now. He's a he's a professor. He's a professor. You know him, Tony. He came to my sh- our show. When we when we did that show in Minneapolis and the dude uh, proposed to his, his old lady, he was the dude that proposed. No, no, no. He was the dude oh. who was in the who was in the green room with us. My boy Mike. I think I remember. He was a professor. Yeah, he was. Wow. Dude. Yeah. Yo, that's horrifying. So so they put something in there. I didn't sign up for that. Yeah, they like. I guess like like. I ain't heard that. 
I listen. I'll have him when he gets a moment explain it to us. But yeah, he because he this was happening for like two three weeks. He was like, it's in so much pain. He was like, it swole up like an avocado, and he like his skin felt like an avocado skin. Ooh. He was like, he didn't know what the problem was. You know, he thought he had an infection from from the procedure. Yeah. Like he thought that they had. This is when he knew something wrong. He's like, I feel like they left a tool in there or something. And then, like a week later, that's when it pierced through his his scrotum, and he just oh. he just took a deep breath and he yanked it out, and he Ooh. was like, it was painful, but he's like he he felt such a relief after doing it because your body would tell you when something foreign is in there and it's not right. That's right. He's like, yeah. He's like, man, he felt so much better after, even though he was still. He a can pain. sue for that, can he? He could, I guess, but I don't know, man. Like it was a freak accident. I guess it doesn't happen often enough for it to be malpractice. You know, I should have just, to keep happening for, <laughs> for it to be eligible for. Well, I mean, for like us. if it if it if it kept happening, then they have a history of it, and they can like sue the company that manufactures the piece that they did it. Or if it's malpractice, they can say that this doctor has had this many uh, incidents with this, and like this is just uh, user error, or the doctor just has created has done malpractice. So. I guess they have to have some type of record to to base it against. So I don't know, man. I don't know. If they put pieces in there, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about that. I look it up, man. Look at look up the procedure of of a vasectomy. That because I was all gung ho for it until he told me that story, and I was like, mm-hmm. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm back on the fence now. Yeah, that that messed me up. Yeah, but that he's the only person that I've had. That's what I'm that's, saying. I never heard story. that. Yeah. Everybody I'm not else, up, honestly, yeah, I'm not. Everybody else has had like a super smooth procedure. One of my homeboys mm-hmm. had got his done the day before we had the other homeboy move in, and we were like, "What are you doing?" Like he didn't tell us until we had moved two couches, and we were talking like up two flights of stairs. He didn't tell us like you ain't supposed to be lifting anything heavy, dude. What are you doing? He was like, well, "I'm already here now. Let's just knock it out." I was like, "You right?" That's a good. That's, that's a good friend, friend right, right there. Right. You know, I get my vasectomy earlier today. He yeah. walking backwards with the appliance. Yeah. I know, I, I know I'm ready because like a month, last month, Cotty thought she was pregnant and my reaction to it was like, no, I need to get this done. <laughs> I need, I was not happy. And I yeah. was like, I need to get this done. Oh, man. Man, if Aaron, if Aaron uh, popped up talking about she's pregnant, I, w- I would leave her. <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would, I would leave her. You still gotta, you still gotta raise that baby. I would leave her. <laughs> I would then you get hit with the ridiculous child support numbers. I need twelve thousand a month. I would, I would spend a hundred thousand dollars to change my DNA so, so that baby would be mine. That's how much I'm. That's how much I'm committed to not having kids I ever don't again. Want one. Ever. Again, you understand me? I don't like them. To be honest with you, they're literally just like three notches above how I feel about cats. That's it. I mean, pets in general. That's it. I don't like kids. They. I just them. didn't. I because Kendrick, he's on his way out of the baby phase. Mm-hmm. I don't want that again. Like yeah. I, Keelan is, he's self sufficient. He be doing stuff for Kendrick. He's raising Kendrick. I'm tapped out. I don't even do nothing no more. <laughs> It's just like I don't want to start over with a baby again. I yeah, don't ever want to do would, that again in life. I would adopt, maybe. Yeah, if they, if everything was right, I would adopt at like four though. Like That's what I'm saying. Then. Yeah, I can't yeah. go. I can't go to the to the to the diaper stage in a newborn stage when they literally don't do nothing but just hunch over and sleep and cry. Uh, I don't know what you want. You're crying, but I don't speak cry. I don't we, know what's going <laughs> on. We've said that so much on here, how, like, babies suck. We've said it on Kev's podcast, on these podcasts. Like, babies suck. People always be like, baby, they're still, babies suck. They do. They babies do. Babies suck. First Stop two years. Stop promoting this like it's great. They, they're so cute and the smell and the baby breath. Babies suck. My nephew and my niece, my, 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 my younger sister, uh, she just... Had those babies and they are just adorable. And every time I see pictures, I smile. But if I had to raise them, I would not love them as much. I love them because they're at a distance and I don't have to see them every day. I live vicariously through Google Photos and I see these videos. They're doing cute stuff. But my sister calls me and she got throw up all on her shirt and I see it in her face. Just she's weary because she's also an essential worker. So she has to deal with people on the front line in the medical world. And then she got to deal with these babies that still ain't talking. I just be like, I see it in her face. I'm like, never again. No. 
Never again, man. Y'all are really selling this. What? I mean, I, we don't get me wrong. I, you know I have I, to have kids. I'm going to have kids in the next few years. You know we have that planned out. And you got every single Babies week. are trash. The first two Babies years are going to suck. Trash. That's just what it is. They suck. Yeah. And then they get dope. Yeah. I like kids. Yeah. I like kids. But babies are trash. Babies man. suck. Once, kids are fun. Once they, once they get into like how old uh, Kia's kids are, it's a good time. Yeah. I'm all in. I, I got, I'm a natural with kids. But before that, I'll be like, the it's, it's, just, it's just the babies suck. After that, though, they fun. They dope. They funny. Fuck my, my, kids, kids. my kids make me laugh every day. You hear me? <laughs> I'll drag, drag that F out. Start back here and just come in. Fuck them kids, bro. <laughs> the Fuck babies them. are trash. Them, them babies are super trash, They're man. Trash. I'm, I'm talking about garbage pail kids, trash, man. They ain't, it's just, they ain't all for nothing. They cost so much money they for diapers. They're useless. They are. Useless. Like they, and they don't like, you be trying to talk to the babies, they can't even see you. Like, they just they no. just see shapes. They don't actually, they can't make out eyes and they right recognize voice, but they, they that's it. They offer nothing, they bring nothing to the table. Look at the pictures. The, 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 the. Fuck them kids, bro. Trash. Babies suck. <laughs> they suck. But you'll get past I, it and then it's dope. But that yeah. they suck. They suck. Once ever. you make it through the trash and then it's a great yeah. time. Yeah. I actually That's- just saw my friend Fabi, and she has an 18 month old. He's pretty cute. He's and he does funny stuff. But I bet he is because yeah. you ain't raising him every damn day. He yeah. sucks. I guarantee you, Suck. he sucks. He's trash. trash. Whatever, whatever kid you bring up is trash. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, my I mom it. said I didn't cry. I cried twice in the first six months. So I'm hoping I get a baby. You were like still me. trash though. Yeah, because you were still trash. pooping. You were still. You just didn't up. cry. You, you didn't still cry, needed attention. but you were still annoying. You still sucked. Little uh, Rubber Maid. That was your nickname. Rubber Maid. Like the trash cans. You were trash. <laughs> With any luck, I'll have a baby just like me. It won't be trash. You know I have to have them. Coming oh, up yeah. soon. You yeah. know it's. I got to get through this. You could have done. How old are you, Maya? Why you do you, could, why you, you feel could. this pressure? <laughs> well, I got everybody. Every time my dad is, every time I talk to my dad, when's the baby coming? There's no baby coming. Every time I talk to Tony's parents, when's the baby coming? His sister just had a baby, so now she's like, when's the baby coming? Everybody is constantly on us about when this baby is coming. You can't they have like, the pressure sex, though, because nah, that baby's never going to nope. come. It's just got to be a good time. Oops. To everybody that's asking, you need to drop the kid off with them. 24 hours a day. Y'all, my y'all dad wanted this to here. have a kid. Here it is. My Are dad will move out that? here. Not only will he move out, he's offered to, I can send the baby to the island for the first five years and he'll raise him on oh. the island. Oh, that's perfect. That's, that's what you back. need to do. And send him back that's right after that. You got the cheat code. Yeah, that's ideal. Yeah. And then you don't this even have to do the trash part of the, of the, the baby phase. This is what you do. You send the most impressive and outstanding presence. So they are going to be so excited to finally come live with you because they're going to think that's going to be their normal life. They're, going to, they're in for a rude awakening. However, you don't do the heavy lifting. You just step in like 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 the cool auntie. Hey, I bought you these yes. things. Right? Yo, that's fantastic. She ain't going to take it the, up on it. You get the first three years off. Man, that's paid vacation. <laughs> Dad, bring the baby back at three and then we'll go from there. Paid oh, vacation time gold. off. Yeah, well, the island's the far. That's the fine. Fr- the further Even the better. better. You ain't gotta the, see it. Yeah, further the better. The picture, picture mail comes really fast on these phones, Mike. I don't Tell know you, if you ever sent the picture. We're all, but they- we all close out here worldwide. We connect. Yeah. 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 Look, at, look at us zooming right now. Yeah, and we've already established that the only thing babies bring to the table in the early stages is the cuteness. So all you getting is pictures, and you ain't got to deal with nothing else you want. You still got the freedom of time to move around. You can do what you want. No daycare. You ain't got to worry about that. The up all night crying because they crying. You ain't got to worry about that. What you going to be missing out on? He not talking. They not really talking for real before like two and a half, three. You're not missing out on nothing, Maya. Do it. Fuck and these then kids. he gets the, the strong bond with the grandparent. Oh, yes. yeah. Which is, which is, this is perfect. He's on the island, village. so he, they're going to learn. They're going to learn hard work. Have you they're seen learn, Twins? You see what happened on. to Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was raised on the island? It's fantastic. This is great. 
Kids are trash, great. man. Babies kids are trash, trash man. Everybody's I mean, watching this dad podcast. Kids suck for the trash. first two years. They are trash. Then they get I mean, dope. The, the payoff they get is dope. dope. They get dope. The payoff is definitely just prepared you know, for the trash. Here's, here's the thing. If they had a dog... Like a, a, a like an, a, an emotional support seeing our dog that could help raise a kid, I'd be awful. Then I'd be like, you yeah, this is the best thing. Pack. The dog Pets knows how to change the diapers. The dog has his hand on like the the rocker. He's doing this, rocking the baby to sleep, and I don't have to do anything but just like kind of poke my head in, and be like, y'all good? All right, cool. Classic. That would be amazing. But until that happens, kids are trash. I, I still have to go through the pregnancy and the birth, which from what That's I'm seeing fine. is not ideal. Oh, that's trash. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. going to hate that's that person. That's, that's trash. But you, you get three years off after you do all that. You need it. I don't know. I don't think I would take him up on that. Maybe for like a few uh, months at a time, but not not for the first five years. I tell you. No, three. Mine's, five is too much. Mine's, be too, is, is mine's be too connected with, with the kid. Tony's going to have to put his foot do. down. You know what I'm saying? Tony has to be like, yo, we need this. We need <laughs> this. <laughs> think, of, think about that off. It's worth it. All right, I'll I'll put it I'll put it. It's there. It's on the back burner. Yeah, I'm put that on the minimum, back burner. Minimum two years. Minimum two years. Yeah, two. You could do it in two though. Two is yeah. two is still good. Because after two, and, then I was like, okay, they're getting kind of dope. And yeah. then by four, I was like, yes. And at two, that's when they start remembering stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. So you get them, you get them back at two, and like you would have to probably remind them that they live with their grandfather for the first two years because they're not gonna remember yeah. that. That's not in the years where they were like forming those memories. It's two right. and up, so you could. That's golden. Y'all could li- y'all could be living in a in a trunk. They won't remember that from mm-hmm. one to two. You know in the Winnebago, like I was living in the Winnebago. Yeah, for the first two years. <laughs> I thought hey, that was an apartment. Right. Yeah. Why hey, was but, the Winnebago to go to back in the day? Because the way it's built and set up. <laughs> yeah. I want one low key. I want an RV. I don't want like an old Winnebago. I want only thing old and classic I would want like that is a, is a VW bus. And I still would deck that Wait, out. Wait, that's what it, that, I thought that was the Winnebago. That's not the Winnebago? No, nah, I thought the Winnebago, Winnebago was like more like like the, the boxier joint, like ba 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 like the RV. Oh, no. Yeah. I, want, I want the Volkswagen bus. I like oh, yeah. that. Uh, Me yeah, too. The 60s, the, the, mm-hmm. the peace and love and no yeah. showers. Yeah. Man. The, the spare tire like on those. the front of it. Yeah. There's something about those I just like, man. Me too, man. They sold, they sold the hell out of that. And it's not, it's not like super fancy at all. No. It's literally, uh. it's literally shaped like a black eyed pea. Like it's literally shaped like that, but it's something yep. so cool about it. You can lay out it. in the back, just yeah, drive, man. cross country. Yeah. They got the ones that, they, cause they have a couple of, that are, Built like campers, so you, the top kind of pops up, so it's like mm-hmm. this, but then it, it goes like that, so you can stand up in in, in the actual uh, van. It's it's dope, man. Yeah, they got some new ones, man. I'm like, okay, put your little curtains <laughs> up in the back. I yeah. tapped nope. out once, once, once. Tony, y'all, it sounded good, and Tony was like, '60s, no showers." I was like, <laughs> "Well, you, you you don't have <laughs> to do just that. Like, I'm just saying." But I, once I think of the '60s era, that's the first thing I go to. '60s, '60s like, was musty, done, man. I was like. Yeah, sixties was musty. It's one of it's one of those things, though, man. You gotta uh, you you have to get some aftermarket parts. It's like a lot of those did not come with air conditioner, so you got to get that AC compressor, and that's gonna cost you about five hundred. You also got to get the blower that comes with it. It's like another seventy five dollars. Money well find spent. Out. Yeah, money yes. well spent for the <laughs> AC. Has got the virus. Oh, man, man. <laughs> money where Smith. 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 Yeah, I heard that, Tony. I, you to I don't up. think you did. I did. I don't I did. think you heard it. Because I heard it, I was like, is that why he doubled up? Because he came right back really hard. Money well spent. <laughs> Kia blew my cover. I was like, I was like I'm not, I can't let him sign on that. Money well spent. Always, always call it out. I don't care how serious the convo is. <laughs> always call it out. He does. He's so petty. I don't care about the politics. Call it out. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, all right, America, we're doing a quarantine. Like, Quar- wait, what was wait, that? Qu- Mr. Quarantine? President? Oh, we run that back. Like, all right. Mm-hmm. What else we got, man? Oh, we are hour and nine in. This is the last question. Okay. <laughs> Sarah Turtle asks, how do you all feel about things opening back up and if people should start going back to normal, like going out to eat, friends, gatherings, etc.? 
I think everybody that's not my friend and family should definitely go out. I, 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 I need, we need a test, we need a test group. So if you're not my friend and family, go ahead and do your thing real quick. I'll holler at me in the month. Let me know how you feeling by August. If y'all good, then I'll, I'll start to I, put, my, put my foot in the water. I do like the <laughs> test run aspect of it. Um, <laughs> but I've been protesting. And so yeah. I've been out there in the community close. I done did two of those. Yeah, I did and a then, protest um, and had a game night after, so. Yeah, so we kind of been we putting already, our toes in the water. Yeah. yeah. We, we, it was like 12 of us in that apartment. Yeah. No masks like, on, like just touching Uno cards. Because we did. We did the protest, <laughs> and we went to eat, and then we was like, well, we already here. We already out. Let's play some games. So let's see we what just, happens to us. Who, the, who's, whose background is that with a cat or a kid crying? You know that's Tony. No, that's, no, that's, that's me. me. That's me. Oh. We got a new kitten. Oh. We got a new oh. kitten. Cosmo. Oh. Okay. He, I didn't know if it was a kid. I just it's, assumed it was Tony's cat and just didn't pay no mind. I, I heard it, but wait, I was that, like, was, that was Tony's cat and not Cam's? No, we got Cosmo. He's over here. He's just Did Cam around. get a cat too? No, Cam does not have a cat. Cam watches our cat. Oh, so. I got confused. Okay, that's what it was. All right. Okay. Well, how about that? Yeah, he's nine weeks. He's a tiny little black thing. Um, and no one wanted the black ones because I guess they don't Instagram well. What's new? What? Midnight killing the game. When I contacted her, I said, I want one of these kittens. I wanted the black male kitten because we have Midnight. a black male cat. Mm -hmm. Midnight is killing the game. People make shirts about Midnight and come to my shows. I'll be like, get out, security. <laughs> <laughs> this lady had on a Midnight shirt. I was like, you know what? Mm -mm. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, wait, what was the question? The question okay, is about opening back up after oh, quarantine. Yeah. No, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, open. I just, I feel I don't want people to just, I'm not going to go out just because it's going to be annoying. Not because I'm scared of getting sick. It's just because everybody's been locked up for so long, it's going to be too much. I got to get these shirts made. I had this idea for these shirts that say, uh, I could have stayed in quarantine for this. And uh, I need to go ahead and get that made before August because I, I feel like that's going to make a lot of sense. Yeah, because I just, yeah. I don't want that stuff. I already be annoyed and I know people going to be acting a damn fool. Yeah. I'm not looking forward I to I want to go to the movies. I know that Yeah, one. but I'm going to be doing little stuff. Like I'm, I'm going to be doing little stuff like game nights and, you know, you, stuff like that. You better but, hope the movies are still out, Tony. They're coming out. Mm -hmm. They're coming, opening back up. Mm -hmm. We're going to see. And production, I think, on shows and stuff start on the 12th, I believe. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, look, at, well, look at you. You got all the answers, Keon. I'll mm -hmm. be, you know, I'll be looking stuff up. When, it, when, I, when it's stuff I, I'm interested in, I'll be like, when is, you know what, when are we able to... <laughs> Especially because like movie, after we man. had the protest game night day, I felt like a human again. I I keep it one hundred. Yeah, it felt good. Man. I was like, this felt good. It was a good time. People was opening up, sharing. Mm. Yeah, it was a good time. People also open up and share on uh, uh, Zoom with the homies. Well, yeah. That's true. Uh, am I doing it this week? That's yeah. true. I got you on there. We uh, I got the fly. Actually, I need to pull in and post them right now. And I got to do. Damn it, that you scared. Literally, as soon as I hop off here, I got to start the link for that one. For those of you listening to the show, uh, Tahir does a Monday through Friday. Or is it Monday through Thursday? Thursday. Right? Monday, Monday through, through Thursday. Thursday, Zooming with the homies joint where it's Tahir and his fellow comedians just talking. Just talking over Zoom. Uh, Monday through Thursday. So Y'all should tune in, pull up. He always got a different cast of characters every night. And it's a good time. They be hitting on my time. raggedy internet and, uh, you know. More I'll be in the chat, though. I'll be in the than, chat. More than the internet, we hate on Tony because Tony is never on time, guys. Tony ain't out nowhere. He just comes late every time for it's the music DNA show, for, for his show, for Zoom with the homies. Tony just be late. And he used to get on Doughboy all the time for being late. And Tony does the no, exact I didn't. Same. I never, uh, Doughboy is punctual. I never what get on him about that. He's always right. on time. You're right. You're right. You hit on Doughboy about other spreading things. falsehoods out here. I don't, <laughs> get on, I don't get on nobody about being late. I just be quiet. But when you be late, too, I log it. And Keon be late, too. I'll be late to this. I do be late. I'll be on time most of the time. But to hear, you are very punctual. 
Thank you, sir. Absolutely. But I, I've told Tony this before. It doesn't excuse the lateness, but I am politely late. If I'm running late, I will he's, let he's you know. He's politely late. Yeah, yes. he's politely late. I will late. let yeah. you know if I'm running. Tony, you should be like, man, you ain't seen the dude in 30 minutes. Where are you at? But you can still be fired whether you're polite or not. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That's what it boils down to. You can still be fired. <laughs> I need a redo yes. on, on Zooming with the homies anyway because people just think I'm some junkie. <laughs> I was high one time. That's all it takes, man. I was high one time. You never That's get it. a second before, chance. Before, before <laughs> Tahir got it to where it as where it is now, when he first started doing it, we he was just hitting people like, yo, we're gonna chat. I didn't even know it was a thing the first time. I thought we were all just like, we ain't seen each other in a while. How's everybody doing? Because I was so I was like, oh, can I be comfortable? That's why I didn't have on no shirt. I was high. And I was like, oh yeah, we we with the homies. Turns out it's thousands of people watching. I was like, oh, and now Bro, I'm the now I'm a, Snoop. We had a new high last week. Uh, Thursday, I had 3,000 people in there. Wow. Like 3,600. 3,600. That was the most nice. that we... That's more than all Def has ever had on any live. Really? Oh. Yes. Wow. And I, I, I have 10% of their followers. <laughs> the number. They're 4.4 million. I'm at 47,000. That's dope. That's people, dope. We, people just we want to hear what y'all got going on, man. Yeah, man. Talk no, to I, the am, people. I am sticking to the... I'm never having a shirt on in there. <laughs> Yeah, I, got, gotta, I gotta stick, gotta stick, stick to it now. It. It's been three or four yeah, times. I'm, I'm not having a shirt on. It's gonna be a My good time. My favorite Zooming with the homies is still that first one, though. Oh, man, we was going for like four hours and 45 minutes. That first one was a good time, man. It's a marathon. That, I, is that the one I was high on? Yeah. That might have been, yeah. yeah. That was the first one with Jackie and all of that. It was, it was yeah. great. That was my favorite one so far. Because now... Sometimes, you know, people feel the pressure now that there's a flyer or something. I got to be on. And yeah. so everybody be talking a lot. And you know, when people start talking a lot, I fade out. And then I start, I'll be in the chat. I'll be typing. Somebody got on me for that uh, on Kev's page. It was like, Keon ain't got no personality. Because, you know, I'll fade out if everybody starts being extra. Yeah. But yeah. I'll be like, I just don't, I don't be fighting for the spotlight. I, I don't fight for yeah, the spotlight just, well. I, I, think, I think it. I think it also depends on the crowd that you're with. Because if it was me, Tony, Keon, Keenan, uh, Brandon Lewis and stuff like that, I think that y'all would still be y'all. I think it also mm-hmm. matters on the crowd that you went to. Because Tony, yeah. Tony does all that, but when we in person, Tony would be all in there. It don't matter if people talking to Tony. Yeah. We in the community. But it's just, <laughs> it depends on the crowd that he's with. It definitely like, does because... Going back to the game night Saturday, because I was with my people, mm-hmm. I was. Oh, yeah. Keon was talking. I was going in, but no, and Tony was like, Keon was, was, he was talking like, his ass off. He was like, you must be drunk or something because you're not this chatty. Man, as soon as, soon as I got there, he was chopping it up. Yeah, Tony. He was asking the hard hitting question, everything. I'm like, man, he not talking a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so not like he was like, hold on. What's That's going so on? funny, man. That's so funny. Uh, and then, but like you know, when when I'm playing Udo, I'm hella vocal because I yeah. love just the commentary of the Udo game. Yeah, that's funny. That's mm-hmm. funny. Uh, to hear, man. Thank you for pulling yeah, back, it, bro. Yeah, man. Thank As you for always, having me. I felt I, I, uh, I felt like I was do this because the first time I did the show. Uh, Keon couldn't really participate because he was he was on daddy duty. He was literally having daddy issues oh, while we were man. filming. He was like grabbing the grabbing the sun. <laughs> There's been several like, episodes of that. The, the one the we bunker. we had Kev on, I wasn't even on that episode. My kids <laughs> were acting a damn fool. <laughs> The, like half, we made a little, they made a little montage of me like actually being, and half of them some kid. I'm, hey, 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 damn it, come in. Like that was the whole episode. That was the entire. It was just Cam and Tony pretty much because I was. Just, uh, like, I that was great. That was great. So I'm glad I got a chance to come back on, man. Yeah, we gotta have Kev back on because now <clears throat> Kev is in a different space with his kids now. Yeah, I, Isaiah is out of here. Oh, Isaiah he's gone. is out of here. Yeah, man. So it's. It'd be cool to get a different perspective because now he's he's coming over to where I am. JoJo is hanging on by a thread, but mm-hmm. he out here with me <laughs> in the abandoned dad's club. Uh, but thank you though, bro. Uh, For sure, appreciate don't it, forget, bro. Zooming with the homies every night, Monday through Thursday. Uh, Nine to who you got? Nine to who you got Pacific Wednesday Center. night? Who you got Wednesday night to you? Uh, Wednesday, you know, uh, I have. Uh, 
Spank Horton. Um, actually, no, Spank is tonight, actually. Wednesday, I got Clayton Thomas. I got Tone Bell. Uh, I got Sir Irvin Williams. Uh, and like two other people, too. It's going to be a good show, though. It's going to be a real good show on yeah. on, on, uh, on Thursday. I went on Wednesday night. So make sure you tune in. 9 to 11 Pacific Standard Time. And you also got uh, Damn Internet You Scary? Damn Internet You Scary. That comes out. Uh, we do it live Tuesdays for our Patreons. And then we uh, debut it on Thursdays for everyone else. And then Word in This Hard comes out every Wednesday uh, on my YouTube channel as well. So make sure you check that out as well. That would be funny too. It's a lot mm-hmm. of fun, man. We have we have Wording is hard is the funniest show on TV right now. <laughs> Straight up. Thank this you. This is man. the funniest thing going That's, right I, now. A lot of it's thanks to Maya, man. Maya is a crowd favorite, man. They just want man. her to change her shirt. But they love she Maya. She's back there. They people don't respect the uniform. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I, I agree. Saying? Like, I agree, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I agree, man. Wait till y'all see uh, uh, Keisha E's episode, uh, D-Lay's episode, uh, Keenan episode was hilarious as well, man. Oh, Keenan. Keenan was getting so mad with making me laugh. <laughs> he wanted to push the air. <laughs> and you actually beat Keenan, didn't you? I did. I did. How many I, victories you got? Who have you beaten? Right now? I don't know. Maybe about four or five. Okay. Maya, what did you? Because Precious it's... is the new episode, right? Yeah, that comes out yeah. tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, we can't spoil who won that one, but yeah, I know you beat Keenan. You beat BT, right? Yes. Yes, I beat BT. The ones we just shot, you you beat two people, so I don't yeah. want to spoil it. But yeah, yeah, you beat oh, a few. Wow. Yeah, man, I've been out look, here, bro. That, look, bro. Did look. you did you beat Sabrina? Look, man. Hold on, hold on. Let me show you something, man. I'll tell y'all, it's not a game, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to better myself. <laughs> Wait, I don't like this because I ain't done it yet. You can't be bulking up like before I get there. And I, then I have take a huge to L. better myself. You understand? <laughs> to hear out here, cheese. You training? Man. Yeah. I'm, you supposed just, to come in. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to speak. That's it. I don't want to know the big words. I just want to be able to speak. I know I'm in here, but like just saying them sometimes give me trouble. So I like maybe if I read them again, just brush up on everything. I can speak a good. See, look, I can speak a good. My tongue, bro. <laughs> I can My speak tongue. a good. I can speak a good. I can speak a good. <laughs> speak a good. You <laughs> hear me talking like a slave sometimes. I can speak, speak a good. good. I can speak what? a real good, master. <laughs> uh, speak a good. <laughs> anyway, yeah. y'all, uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, I don't even know what I got going. No live shows on the deck right now. Uh, I probably won't be back on the road till the fall, y'all. So, yeah, you know, uh, same here. So I am doing a Zoom I'll be show. Local. Doing a Zoom show on the twentieth. Sorry, Tony, cut you up. Uh, were you done? Yeah, yeah, I was done. Sorry, I sorry, done. sorry, sorry. Apologies. Twentieth, uh, I'm doing my first, probably only stand up Zoom show. Uh, I'll be posting the flyer on my IG. Uh, and then, other than that, internet stuff, y'all know where it, where it is. Uh, oh, I, I will say, I do have my YouTube page. It's about to start popping soon. I got some stuff in the works, and it's going to be shows and all that stuff on there. So just, it's coming. If Keon is willing to step out the house, I would love to get Keon on the next episode of Word in This Heart. So on yeah. the next round of shoots for word in this heart. Oh, I already and t- got COVID, though. We had we got- game night and protest. I got it. I'm out uh, the house. And uh, I'll, I'll get Tony <laughs> Baker punk ass on here for the rematch because he's saying he deserves a rematch. So we'll get Tony Baker punk ass on here. Yeah, because y'all, y'all didn't have the rules together <laughs> when I did it. Because you did the first one, right, Tony? Yeah. Yeah. But, but I wasn't the first. I was the first episode they dropped, but I was, what, the second or third recorded? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think you were. I think you were. But they were before. still fumbling with the rules and stuff. So I was yeah. like, "Oh, I could have did." And then that would have, yeah. Yeah. Well, shut up. I still won, but I, I wanted to win by more. All right, Tony. You know what I'm saying I well, respect that. Step on their throat. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm out here now. You understand me? <laughs> Do you think to hear me shadow box? Like, the, the, no. I hate. I owe you. <laughs> Peter Piper, Peter Piper, Peter Piper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have a. I'm gonna have a, a a translator for me from now on. Just somebody in the seat next to me, like like Obama's translator when they did it on Key and Peele. That's exactly what I'm gonna do from now on because I'm sick of it. <laughs> That's funny, man. 
Thank you, Maya, for the questions, the setup. And, uh, of course. As usual, guys, if you have any questions for us, ask us in the comment section on the YouTube page. We'll tackle them on the show. Uh, and as usual, man, we out here. Yeah, thanks for here. Thanks for coming by, man. Thank you for having me, guys. I'll Thank talk you. to you later. All right, bet. Peace. Bye. Boom.